there is the possibility of producing a portfolio for submission to art school that is exponentially more sophisticated on a compositional level on a compositional level than, than the overwhelming majority of people who are currently submitting portfolios okay let's get after this i do spy storm clouds on the horizon open ai chat gpt stable diffusion uh what's the discord one mid-journey mid-journey and the ilk are are precipitating um are in the, in the process of precipitating a an admissions crisis uh in art and design schools globally now now do i have any evidence to suggest do i have material evidence that that's currently happening no no i don't however it's on the horizon and why is it on the horizon well very simply the ramifications of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence writing but more particularly tools like uh mid journey which is a discord based image generation tool that's based on stable diffusion and open ai technology the ramifications of that are are staggering i'm going to put on the screen right now i'm going to put um uh some some video footage of mid journey image creation and, and you can watch I'm, I'm sure all of you are familiar with this but you can watch in 30 seconds as relatively sophisticated compositionally sound imagery uncanny and strange imagery in most cases but relatively sophisticated imagery is created nearly instantaneously so what is the issue the issue is the fundamental way that students have been taught in high schools so in high schools as you know uh art school takes a back seat i mean art class takes a back seat except for a very small group of people who are highly motivated and who want to go into art, art architecture and design now the vast majority of people who are in in uh in art programs in high school if you ask me are there in order to try and take uh, as as for one of two reasons as a respite from the the stress of the day which is legitimate art school i mean art programs in high school are fun they're in some ways they're exponentially more fun than math but there is another group of people that are there in order to uh to pad their their uh cv their their uh, college resume with with uh with high grades now that doesn't happen in all programs needless to say but that is one of the main reasons why uh, why people are in in those programs so anyway the point is is that with the highly motivated students with that small subset the 25% of students whatever whatever the percentage is the smaller percentage of students who are actually thinking about pursuing art and design as a career they come in two varieties if you ask me if you have any experience with high school students this is just basic human nature most high school students they they are uh, the entire educational system is um is oriented around results uh and most high school students are not self-actualized human beings that's rare it's rare in a human being and it's even more rare in a high school student and and the point is is that the feedback loop the feedback loop that lies at the heart at the absolute core of effective art and design training is something that is is rarely in place as a high school student i'm going to try to explain what this means very simply so in order to learn in order to learn as an artist or a designer there's really there is a fundamental activity that i believe that one must get involved in and that is is active creation of work producing the work and then primarily sitting in the presence of the work thinking through the ramifications of the work and then producing more work as a response to the thing previous now there are complexities to that in other words you can submit that work to critique you can talk about it with colleagues you can talk about it with a mentor or a peer but the feedback loop the capacity to make work emphasis on work to to assess the work and to produce a version 2 3 and 4 that track a stable trajectory through a process that is the primary way one of the primary structures by which we get better what does this have to do with uh, open ai i'm going to put on the screen some footage from uh from uh, uh from mid journey which is a discord based image creation uh software now you can see the text prompts are producing imagery in 30 seconds sophisticated imagery now you may not like the the aesthetic style of the work and you may talk about the uncanny valley and how strange much of this work work looks but the fundamental compositional principles that to this day even even in a conceptual culture are taught are taught in art school in art and design school open ai is producing imagery that conforms to those principles in 30 seconds so we see balance harmony contrast shape color line and form much of the work if this work was submitted within a portfolio within a portfolio 
it is far more sophisticated in terms of compositional hierarchy and, sh and, and, and displays a higher level of visual intelligence or acuity than, than the overwhelming majority of, of portfolios submitted. And so the ramifications are that, that when individuals are now capable of producing non-traceable, stochastically derived, so in other words, um, largely randomly derived imagery that is compositionally sound in 30 seconds, there is the capacity, there is the possibility of producing a portfolio for submission to art school that is exponentially uh, uh, more sophisticated on a compositional level than, than, than the overwhelming majority of people who are currently submitting portfolios to primarily undergraduate schools. So what are the ramifications of that? Well, the ramifications of that are are that this is going to fundamentally alter what happens in art school. I'm also going to show on on on, uh, on the screen right now a session that it, uh, that I did on ChatGPT with regard to writing. So it, the same thing is happening with regard to writing. The prompt that I'm using here was to draw to have ChatGPT draw uh, write a 2,000 2,500 word essay that draws a uh, a correlation between Freudian psychoanalysis and a piece of 1990s experimental avant-garde graphic design entitled The Conversion of St. Paul, which is actually my work. I didn't show the, the chat GPT the work. And actually the 2,500 word essay that was produced is the basis, could, could stand in in some ways for beginning or mid-level critical writing on art and design. This is going to fundamentally alter almost every aspect of what is happening in, uh, in the teaching of art and design. Further, the reason why it's going to uh, fundamentally alter that is because it's going to fundamentally alter what is actually happening in the real world. Uh, the, the, so in, um, in things like uh, illustration, book design, poster design, primarily, primarily forms of, of commercial art or art that, that use a digital uh, production pipeline uh, this is going to have far-reaching and fundamental uh, re uh, fundamental repercussions for uh, the practice of, of of these fields, and so therefore schools are going to have to adopt uh, going to adapt. But the but the admissions crisis that 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 um, that I'm referring to is not currently upon us. It's not that I don't think schools are dealing with this now, but they're going to be dealing with it almost instantaneously. And what is that? It's going to be the inability for the admissions officer to be able to determine whether or not. Um, whether or not a, pr a person is um, is capable, without these specific tools, of producing work, uh, producing work that is sophisticated. But the, but the but the emphasis is not on whether or not they they produce work that's sophisticated. It has to do with the time component. So what it really effectively takes out of the equation is the work ethic of the student. In so many ways, a portfolio is really a reflection of the of the work ethic of the student historically. You can see people who, like a musician, went, went, uh, uh, had a practice, even in high school, had a practice that they were dedicated to. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the capacity to produce sophisticated imagery within a 30-second period and repeatedly produce variations of that short circuits that entire thing. So what is going to happen, it, it, to my mind, is one of two things. One is that the vast majority of schools are going to embrace the tools. But what they're going to, going to be left with is they're going to be left with utilizing things like the SATs in order to, in order to determine uh, who are, who are uh, viable candidates for competitive programs. Why is that? Because an SAT and the ACT tests are proctored. And what that means is that an individual that it's, it's going to be one of the only ways in, in, um, in the absence of the real work in order to determine um, w whether or not the, the, the student can, can write and whether or not the student actually, uh, it's, it's almost like a proxy IQ test. Now, I realize the SATs and the ACTs have a lot of biases, inherent biases built into them, and this is a problem. Uh, further, it's my belief that this is going to have another incredibly profound effect on, on the field, and it is going to be the return of the real. Hal Foster wrote a book in the 1990s, uh, a, a critical book on, uh, on contemporary art entitled The Return of the Real that dealt with some related issues, but obviously didn't deal with uh, uh, artificial intelligence.
But basically what this is going to do is this is going to force the vast majority of practitioners uh, in order to, uh, to use these tools. But the, but the, the highest performing, the highest, um, the, the highest level of the fields, it's my belief, are going to be pushed further and further back into the realm of the real. And what I mean by that is that, that, that artistic practitioners based upon uh, uh, practitioners of art and design are going to be c continually producing works that are rooted in materiality and the real because it's going to be one of the only ways to um in order for that commodity to to carry to carry value when something is uh, is so easily produced when something is produced with lightning rapidity and with little effort what's going to end up happening is the the, the kind of brand id the kind of identity of the of the person who produces the work and then that made manifest in material that the, that the real object is going to take on a pronounced uh pronounced uh, importance. But effectively, what I think that's going to do is it's going to compress the field of art and design. You're going to find 75, 80% of the practitioners, uh, 80% of practitioners, that the field is going to change radically in 80%, in, in, in kind of 80% of the field, where the where artificial intelligence tools, as they develop over the course of the next 5, 10, or 15 years, are, are going to eliminate uh, tons of, uh, plenty of work. But what it's going to do is it's, it's going to push, I believe it's going to push uh, artistic production back into a kind of material condition, a material condition that is uh, profoundly um, uh, not informed, um, not digital. Now it may be it may be uh, driven by digital production uh, uh, methods like CNC or whatever, but it is going to be a rise and a return to the real. So the storm clouds that I'm talking about, the profound implications of of open AI, artificial intelligence, I don't believe are currently this year being felt in art and design schools. But if you look at what's happening with my students, my own work, and, and across the board, the, this, this, the, the, quite quickly, we are going to find that it is going to be nearly impossible to determine, to determine whether or not um, what the what the kind of work that we're looking at is, and so therefore, um, uh, it's my it's my understanding that schools like or or that uh, the Cooper Union in New York City at one point used to require individuals to literally submit uh, submit a, a sketchbook a, a, a really uh, comprehensive sketchbook of their work. It's my belief that that uh, that many art schools are going to either have to rely on uh, something which is terrible, which is primarily standardized test proctored standardized tests. Or in order to determine the visual acuity, the visual intelligence of the uh, of uh, of the candidate, are going to have to require they're going to have to require actual materials to be sent back to the institution. Now, most institutions currently use tools like Slide Room, which students submit portfolios primarily as digital items, as as uh, as JPEGs or PNGs. Um, you know, uh, if they're not using Slide Room, they're using a home rolled or bespoke version of that. It's I don't I don't think that uh, that currently in 2023 there are any arts art and design schools that I know of that are requiring actual material to be submitted to uh, to um, uh, to gain admissions to the school. So I, I I do believe that that is a possibility that that open AI may in may in fact uh, force schools that the most effective way to determine uh, uh, visual IQ plus work ethic is going to be to see the actual material.